It's a great pleasure to be uh, having Alicia with us today. Could you please introduce yourself and what do you do for business? Hi, my name is Alicia Carey. I am a model and actress in Orlando, Florida, United States. And in many print ads, you'll see me on billboards, magazines, etc. here in the United States. Yeah. Uh, great. Like, uh, Alicia, what inspired you to start uh, in this industry? I was inspired as a child. I, I actually used to watch uh, my favorite movie when I was a child was Annie, and I wanted to be Annie. And my mother told me because I was a brown little girl that I could never be Annie. And I decided I was going to show her hair, anything else. And so that's what inspired me initially. And then and when I got older, I started watching some of my favorite models like Naomi and also Tyra Banks. And I decided, you know, that's something I really wanted to do. And so it just all started from there, me watching them. Uh, could, could you explain the difference between acting and being a model? Well, when you are modeling, you really don't say very much. You have to bring out all of your emotion through your face, through your body, through your wardrobe. And so you have to tell an entire story without saying a word. With acting, there are actually words and there's also emotions tied with those words, movements, etc. And so you have to be able to tie all of that together. And uh, which one do I like best? I must say I like them both as a matter of fact, because they, they both take a lot of strength, energy and a lot of study time. So I like them both. Uh, how is the camera different with a model uh, than an actress? When you're modeling, you always have a chance to redo a, a, a pose. You have time to redo just about everything because everything is staged when it comes to modeling, including the makeup, your hair, etc. And you can always go through an entire roll of film and just choose the best. But when it comes to acting, it all depends on what type of acting you're doing. Because you, if you're doing stage, it's live. If you're doing, I do modeling on television as well. Um, I'm actually live on one of our shows here called Home Shopping Network, where you can buy items. When you are live doing, whether it's stage or whether it's doing just regular live television, whatever happens, happens. So if you slip and fall, you just slip and fall and the whole wide world just saw you. Now, when it comes to film or television, you can always do another take. So they can always say, cut and then they can do it again you know so you can make mistakes when you're doing that but that's that's the real difference it, it's a lot easier to edit when you're not live okay how close or how far are you with the audience being an uh, being a model uh, model or an actress um when you say close or far i'm not really sure what exactly you mean can you um, elaborate I on mean that? like you are closer to interacting with the audience speaking with them getting their feedback um, uh, that kind of stuff. It depends because when you're modeling, you're really not uh, interacting with an audience at all. You're interacting with the photographer, uh, normally sometimes with other models. Uh, the only time that you're really interacting is when you do runway, when you do live shows. That's when you're interacting with other models and you're having to pay attention to music and the audience, etc. Uh, but when it comes to acting, I mean, as far as interacting with the audience, you really you don't really interact. The it's more of the audience is interacting with you, and they it, it's mostly their their feedback, their applause, the way that they they react to you is how you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Alicia, can you hear me? Alicia? Yes, I can. Yeah, great. Yes. So, how do you deal with the feedback from your audience? Usually, I mean, either way it goes, whether they liked it or, or did most, most of the people here in the United States, they realize how difficult it is to, to be an actor and they, they appreciate the talent, the effort, et cetera. So normally the feedback, you, you just kind of take it as it is, even if they were to not be happy with your performance. You just learn how to how to take it with the greatest salt. 
It's all, you know, you have bad days, you have good days. The same thing with auditions. Um, we have good auditions and bad auditions. They happen all the time. We develop a thick skin over here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, how different is your, um, do you deal with feedback being a model and being an actress? How different is the feedback? Yeah. Uh, um, with acting, you don't be back if it's a live show. But if it's a film or something like that, if it's posted, uh, yeah, I'm here. Yeah, I'm here. Uh, yes. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear okay. you. Go ahead. Um, if, okay, if you're acting, you usually get feedback if it's a live show. But with, with um, modeling, I tend to notice uh, the feedback whenever I post a photo online, um, et cetera. And soon I'll have my fan page as well. But whenever I post online and I, I see the feedback of my photos, that's when I realize, you know, whether it was a good photo, bad photo, I, I get all types of advice, et cetera. And I'm normally very surprised. Whenever I take photos, I never know how they're going to turn out. I'm super surprised when they turn out great. Okay, let, let, let me ask you this question. Like, how does your business, I mean, your director, your manager, your producer, uh, shape your image on social media? I'm not sure if I understood the question. Like, um, does your manager or does your producer um, help uh, shape a certain image about you with your, audio, with your uh, audience? I, but I feel like they do not because I create my own image and I'm actually registered with model and talent agencies and their job is to get me a job. Uh, so they, what they do is they get me that job and then from there, but basically I'm building my, my own person, my own character, et cetera, when it comes to modeling. I am, I am my own brand, so I create me. So my normally my agents whatever i submit to them they let me know whether they like what my image is and then we continue on with that uh with acting again i have to i have to conform to whatever the role is so if it's a role that you know i have to be uh, a mother or a drug addict etc then you have to adapt to that and i have to change my look and my way of being in order to to make that character come alive Okay, and what message or what character are you trying to build through your pictures? Uh, I mean, um, to your modeling career. Like, is there a basic concept, a basic character you're trying to deliver to the world? No, actually, when you're a model, you're a chameleon. So you, you basically change who you are at all times. I mean, if you look through my, my photos on my Facebook page, I look different in all of my photos. And I look different because a model's job is to be a chameleon, to change all the time. You should be able to change your hair. You should be able to change your style. And from my type of modeling, I do, um, I'm a commercial model where I do commercials, et cetera. But I also do what's called cosplay, which is costumes. I do a lot of uh, costumes and I do a lot of characters. Um, I, and so, you know, it's totally up to you how you want to, to show yourself or brand yourself. But I, I definitely, I am a chameleon when it comes to all of the, the changes when it comes to modeling. And so I'm very versatile, which is, is really a good thing because there are some models that cannot be versatile. I enjoy being versatile because it's a lot of fun to me. And I absolutely love costumes, I must say. <laughs> yeah, that's so interesting. Okay, let, let, let me ask you about your acting. Like you say, if you get um, a certain character, you have to stick to that character. Like how much of yourself do you put do you put in your role? Normally, you you let yourself go because the character is not about you. What you do is you you wrap yourself around that character and you become that character. So when you are acting, you are not you. So you have to set yourself aside and you have to understand that act the the actual uh, character's feelings, the character's emotions, what's going on around this character, and you have to just immerse yourself into developing you as another person because you're not really you you're that character and you know you know when you did a great job normally if you have people that let's say you have an evil character and you see people out on the streets and they dislike you and they really hate you that means you did an excellent job oh wow okay okay can you sometimes uh, reject uh, a role Alicia? Repeat that. You're, you're, 
Yeah, can, can you sometimes? Uh, uh, yeah. Did you get that question? Alicia? Breaking up. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, can, can you sometimes reject a role? Ah, uh, yes. I mean, you can reject anything you want. Everything in this business is about you. You can reject it at any time. I, I, uh, right before I, I started speaking with you today, like I, I do have uh, agents and the agents will send me different roles and I'll look them over and make a decision of whether I want to do them or not. It's totally up to you as the actor, what you're willing to do or not to do. There's always another actor that will do the things that you want, but it's up to you to set your own standards. Mm -hmm. What are the requirements to be a model? There are different types of requirements because there are different types of models, which a lot of people getting into the business don't realize that there's more than one type of model. We have, I'm a commercial model. So a commercial model, you would see, whenever you see me on television, you're going to see more of my face or you're going to see my body. I may be working out, but I do a lot of makeup lines, a lot of hair lines, etc. And then there are fashion models. Okay, so for a, a commercial model like myself, you the height requirement is a lot lower than it would be for a fashion model. A commercial model is usually a shorter model. They're normally between, I would say, they could be about any size. They're not super tall. The tallest they are is about five foot nine. So it's five foot nine and below. Usually a, a model like myself, the focus is more on our face, our hair, our beauty, um, sometimes our body we work out, uh, et cetera, but we're, we're there to sell products. So we're the person you'd see in a magazine or a commercial, uh, et cetera, or advertising beauty products. Uh, when it comes to high fashion, that's a different type of model. Those models are usually five foot nine to about six feet tall, and they have to be really tall and they have to be able to walk. Now I am five foot eight, so I qualify for a runway type model or fashion model but I am not specifically a fashion model. So it just depends on what type of model you want, want to be. And the good thing about the uh, modeling industry right now, they have opened up their doors to a lot of things that they did not previously. You used to have to be very skinny. Now they have the more curvy model because they realize a lot of ethnic models are curvy. And so there are so many types of models now. They have the larger ones, they have the shorter ones, they have kids. They even have uh, models that are over the age of 65. So it's, it's, a, it's a free open field for everybody. <laughs> yeah, that's so interesting. What, what about acting? With acting, acting actually is pretty interesting because when I first started acting, I'm, I'm newer to acting than I am modeling. I've modeled for years. Uh, acting is very interesting because as you get older, it actually is a better thing for you. Uh, a lot of actresses in Hollywood say otherwise, but I've found the older you get, the better. Because when you're, in, you're 20 years old, when you go into an audition, you're competing against about 20 to 30 other people. If you're 40 years old and go in the room, you may be competing against 10 people. So the older you get, the better, the less competition that you have. And also the other, the region that I live in, we have a lot of Spanish speaking people. So the more languages you could speak, or usually in the business, they look at what you look like. They don't necessarily know what race you are. And for instance, you, if you were here, they would think that you were Spanish or you could be Indian. And the more races that you can look like and the more languages that you can speak, the better, the more dialects. So for, me in this region, I mean, I do quite well because I, I look like all types of different races that are here and I'm able to speak Spanish as well. Yeah, so interesting. What are the challenges uh, in both industries? The challenges in modeling. The challenges in modeling here in the United States racially is a problem because here they tend to book more of a white model, a lighter skin model, a white model. And if you are any ethnicity, they tend to only have one that's brown, one that's tan, et cetera. They, they will choose one of each. But normally when it comes to the white models, they will have 10 white models and they'll have one black model and, you know, one Spanish model, you know, one more tan. They, they really tend to not be racially diverse enough. I think that the industry, it's been, for, it's been years that they have not been actively diverse. And I think it's about time, especially with what's happening here now with the Black Lives Matter movement, et cetera. I think, think that they need to bring in more 
black models. I want to see, you know, Arab models. I want to see. I would love to see more Arab models because we don't really see the representation of the Arab models here. Um, I have friends and I do have family that wear a hijab. hijab. Um, I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, yeah, yeah. but they're beautiful. And I would love to see more representation for the little girls here that are Arab and, you know, that, that they can see on American television because they don't show that beauty and they don't show many other diverse beauties here. They're starting to little by little, but they need a whole lot more. And I, I would like to see the image of those Arab models from other countries to, to be all over American television and they become more familiar with their fashion, et cetera. And I must say, I love Arab fashion. It's so beautiful. Um, I One day if I get married, I would love to wear an Arab dress. I don't know if that's, that would be acceptable, but I just think that it's so beautiful and the colors and I, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very nice. Okay, could you tell me about a situation or a difficult situation uh, which you managed to overcome? Wow. Um, well, a lot of times when it comes to modeling, there are always difficult situations because they put you in very uncomfortable clothing, shoes, etc. I was in a wedding fashion show one time, live show. I had on a wedding dress and I was the first model to go up. And the first thing that happened was I tried to, they opened the curtains. I had on a American wedding dress, which I'm not sure if you guys have seen them, but they're long and they're white and they're heavy. And I tried to take a step and I could not. And I found out my dress was somehow connected to the stage. There was a nail in the stage and I got stuck. So I, I basically had to politely turn around and let the person behind me know and I was very graceful about it that my dress was stuck and they crawled on the stage and they made sure that they unhooked me and then I just continued to walk like nothing happened but I've had other instances too because I, I'm live on television and oh my goodness I'm sorry I had a radio just go off over there <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that yeah uh but Anyway, I had a live show where I had, um, I was supposed to go on live and at the last minute, I could not find the product that I needed to bring on there. <laughs> and all of a sudden, um, I just, I ran. I ran as fast as I could and got the product, et cetera. And uh, I was able to make it before we came back from commercial. So <laughs> I made it live. You guys have to pardon my radio over there making noise. <laughs> So let's go with the next question. Like, can the people in your industry um, control your self-image and self-esteem? They definitely don't control my self-esteem, but that's something that you learn over the years. And I started to do this as a teenager. So when you're a teenager, you're looking for approval, et cetera. But as you get older, you learn your own self-approval. You know what looks good on you. You know what feels good on you. And as far as control, you're in control. It's just that you have to know how to professionally express your idea or your, your feelings about something. Most of the time, I mean, you're wearing others' items, et cetera. You're, you're uncomfortable. You learn how to deal with being uncomfortable. But if it's something that you just truly cannot do, you know, you, you have to express a way to get the job done and do it professionally. You just, you, you gotta do what you have to do. You know, it, it is one of those things. It's an industry. It's all about being uncomfortable. We just make it look like we're having a good time. But to be honest, being a model is one of the most uncomfortable things ever. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Okay, let me ask you this difficult question. Can you quit because of negative feedback from your manager? Um. You mean, well, I'm thinking in terms of quitting. I mean, not really, because normally my, my talent managers, they, they're not, they're normally not giving negative feedback. The only time that they're giving any type of feedback is if for some reason you were late or you didn't fulfill whatever it was that you were there to do. If you were there to do a commercial and you didn't show up and do the commercial effectively, then they have a real problem. It's just like any other job, you must be on time you must make sure that you do it the best that you can and you always remain professional when dealing with the, the film crew, even with the photographers, et cetera. You have to always keep a professional image. You gotta keep in mind, this is a job. Um, you know, it, 
again, it looks glamorous, but it's a lot of hard work and very, very long hours. We work anywhere from eight to sometimes 16 hours of filming, modeling, et cetera. It just depends on what the project is. So you have to always be prepared and you always have to just stay positive. Yeah. What is your point of strength? Repeat that for me, please. What, what is your point of strength? Where do you think you are strongest? I think my strengths are definitely in modeling and I like public speaking. So I'm going, I'm actually going to start to become a public speaker. I speak a lot about of the Black Lives Matter movement and a lot about um, minorities, the black community, et cetera, because a lot of the things that are going on right now in our country are, ha have been going on for a very long time. And I want the entire world to know and understand what our struggle and our plight has been. So my strength seems to be getting the message out there to people and, and speaking to the people. I, as you see, I have a pretty big audience when it comes to me speaking online. I have a lot to say, and I just want people to know more about my race, my culture, and my country and make them understand a lot more and possibly, you know, be of some assistance in the, in the whole situation that's happening with us over here. And I, I really do appreciate the entire world right now that's standing up for us because we have been unjustly treated here in this country, definitely. Okay, like having this kind of platform, Alicia, can you hear me? Like having this, yes, kind, I, I having this kind of platform and having this kind of audience, is this the best place where you can reach out and uh, address the world? Yes, it is. Actually, I, I like the, the fact that the internet allows you to talk to so many people at will because when it comes to television here, American television, they seem to always censor everything. They censor it and they edit it the way that they want. Because I, I noticed that uh, other like news networks, et cetera, for instance, I've discovered Al Jazeera uh, TV. And I absolutely love Al Jazeera because I noticed that they tell everyone's story and uh, they talk about so many different things. Here in the United States, they focus on some of the same things, um, crime of the black community, and they don't focus on crime in the, you know, with the white community. They, so they shape the stories to show whatever story that they want. So I love the internet because it allows you to do whatever you want. You can create whatever platform you want and you can always just, just tell your story the way you want to tell it and how you want to tell it. And it's, it's pretty exciting. I, I really love the new technology and I hope it continues to grow because it's amazing. The things that I have seen that have grown, changed, um, just everything. Everything. It's amazing. I would have never been able to speak to someone from the other side of the world if it wasn't for technology. Sure, certainly. Okay, now you have, um, like you have had a long experience in your career and you are speaking to a wide audience of people. What have you learned as a, pers as a person from your journey? What have you learned about the people? What have you learned about the world? I've learned that the world is not as different as, you know, I thought because I, I was born and raised here in the United States. The world, people are not as different as I thought they were. People are pretty much the same, but they, they all have different cultures and tastes and foods and, and things like that. And actually, I love that about the rest of the world and I would like to travel more so that I could see all the things and try all the food of Egypt and anywhere else you know, in the world because it, it's really exciting. And the, and the good thing is uh, I live in Florida so I have a lot of friends. I actually have Egyptian friends here. I have friends from the Caribbean islands, Africa, et cetera. So here it's a melting pot. So I get a chance to meet these people. And I definitely heard Egypt is a beautiful place. And I definitely want to come there and check it out and have some of that too. Yeah, certainly. <laughs> You're most <laughs> welcome to do that. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it has been a great pleasure talking to you, Alicia, today. Uh, like, I appreciate your help and effort. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. Alicia, and what is your message to the world? I feel like the world needs to continue being who they are, but I think that the American people need to 
reach out and branch out and learn other cultures so that they can learn to respect other people's cultures and religions and not fear them. Because here in the United States, they tend to have all types of phobias against anyone that is from another country. Um, they, they don't understand them. They don't understand their religion. And so they, a lot of times, villainize them. And in many cases, I mean, I noticed that within the white community here, they, they definitely are afraid of people that, that practice Islam. They are afraid of people from anywhere in Africa. Africa has been villainized. And I think that that's something that needs to stop. I think that if they would take the time and learn and teach about the cultures of those in Africa and the Arab countries, et cetera, that we, you know, learn how to get along and understand each other more. I definitely wish that they had taught us more in school, but here in the United States, we're taught white history only. I'm not even taught about my own history. And as you can see, I have brown skin and uh, I'm definitely not, I, I'm an American, but of course my, my racial makeup, of course I originated in Africa as well. So, you know, it would be nice if, if the kids here, the white children, the black children, we have a mixture here of people, it would be nice if they would teach true history of everybody around the world. And for me, that, that would be a wonderful thing. We, I, I would love to learn langu other languages, et cetera. And our children here need to be more diverse because American children mostly learn only English. And I really do not think that does them any type of service. In order to, to travel the world, to do business with the world, we need to be able to speak another language besides English. And unfortunately, the um, American mentality is if you're in America, speak English. And that, that is a very old way of thinking that they need to change and they need to change it now because the world is growing. The, the brown population of the world, brown and tan population is growing tremendously, especially in this country. And I think that we need to grow with the times and grow up. Yeah.